This is Road Noise, Life One Mile at a Time, Episode 28. It's the story of how I met my wife, and I think you're going to find it cool. Hello again, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Road Noise Life, One Mile at a Time. I'm your host, Michael Blackston. That sound you're hearing under my voice is the sound of the road as I travel all over the southeast on my commute. You're sitting in the passenger seat right next to me as we commute to and from where I work. Uh, Right now, I'm going between Alabama and Georgia on my way home. actually recorded episode 27 last night, and I just felt like recording something again tonight so I said let's go ahead and get ahead of the game and there was a a detail about my week that I left out in episode 27 so I said I guess I can go ahead and tell you about that part as well as I talk about the uh, part of my week what happened in my week section of the podcast but the topic of today is really a story every time my wife and I have sat down with a bunch of friends and told this story they've gone aww that sounds like a book that sounds cool So I would be remiss, wouldn't I, if I didn't include it as an episode of this podcast. And uh, hopefully you get to know me a little bit better, find out how I met my wife and what were the circumstances. You might find it interesting to know that my wife started out as a listener of mine. I wasn't doing a podcast at the time. I was running a radio show. I was 19 years old and running a full-time radio show as an FM country DJ on WRIX 103.1, WRIX 103.1 FM in Anderson, South Carolina. And I ran a show where I could take requests and make dedications and kind of play whatever I wanted to play. I didn't have a playlist. As long as I kept to the format, I could play whatever I wanted. And that's kind of how it started out. I was this lonely teenager and running a radio show and I got a phone call one night and the voice on the other line kind of struck me I'd had I'd been doing it for a while and I'd had a lot of listeners and I had people call me all the time I stayed on the phone constantly during my shifts talking to listeners who would call in and request songs and they'd get to know me and several of them I knew by name and we'd chat for a few minutes and that was all great. I had several of them my age who were female, and we'd call and we'd flirt back and forth and stuff like that, but it never really went any further than that. I never really felt anything for anybody, but when this girl called, there was something to it. There was something in her voice that stopped me dead in my tracks. She wasn't calling to talk to me. She was calling to get ticket information. There was a band coming around the local area And we had announced that we had ticket information, and if you would like to find out how you can get tickets, call in and we'll tell you about it. Well, that's what she was doing, or at least that's what she said she was doing at first. My wife, Kayla, at the time she was 16 years old, and she called in and she said, give me some information on this band. Well, again, right from the start, there was something about the sound of her voice, the way she carried herself on the phone with me that struck me as different and I liked it. So the first thing I did was ran into the lobby and got the information. Why I didn't have it already at the uh, control console I have no idea but it was in the lobby and I ran to the lobby and I got that information and I came back and I gave it to her and then she requested a song and trying to flirt as best as I could over the radio or over the telephone I had her song playing on the air before we hung up. I mean, the song that was coming, that was before the one I played for her was coming to an end and she knew what she wanted to hear. She asked for it and I knew exactly where to get it. So my hands went flying to get that, put the CD in, get it ready, and it was playing. She thought that was kind of cool and that was really the end of the conversation, except that she had told me about something that had happened where she had gotten to meet some members of a band and because I was asking who she was and and just getting some information from her and talking to her a little bit and she had told me about uh, meeting some members of a band after their show at a fair so I said okay that's cool and we hung up apparently something in the sound of my voice sounded like 
I didn't believe her. And it probably was just me being nervous because I was nervous as I could be talking to this girl. I was only 19 years old and I honestly at that time had never been on a date at 19 years old because my high school was an hour away from where I lived. I lived in Anderson, South Carolina and I went to school in Elberton, Georgia. And so at the end of the school day, I went across the state line. I didn't know anybody. There was no after school life for me or anything like that. And then when I went to college, I was consumed with college. And that's exactly where I was at that time. I was taking radio and television broadcasting. And I got the job at this station by being in the program for radio and television broadcasting at Tri County Technical College. And uh, so I, I was new at this. I, I really wasn't the kind of guy who had ever been on a date and ever flirted around a whole lot. I was shy. I was not a geeky guy, but I wasn't a popular kid in school either, so I really didn't have my flirt legs under me yet. And I guess I did sound probably weird to her on the phone, and she, I think, took it as I didn't believe her, because she called me back just a few minutes later to tell me that she would have me know that she was not lying about what she told me about meeting the band. And at that point, I said, wait, no, 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 I wasn't trying to insult you or or belittle you at all. I I really liked your story. I believe you. And from that moment on, we started talking a little bit here and there. She would call and request songs. And over the space of six months, I think it was, she would call and request a song, and I would get it on for her. Get it on for her. Maybe that doesn't really sound so good. I would put the song on the air for her for her, almost immediately. And uh, she got to know the DJ and I got to know the listener. Now, one of the cardinal rules of radio, if you've ever been a, a DJ, you probably know this, never date a listener. First of all, they never sound like you, th- or they never look like you think they look based on the sound of their voice you're treading dangerous waters when you go that route. It's a cardinal rule. Well, after six months of talking to that Kayla girl, it's kind of how I thought of her in my mind. I wish that Kayla girl would call me today. I hope that Kayla girl calls me today. After six months of this, I finally got the courage to go a little further. She called me one night in January. Yeah. At the end of December, I think it was, actually. It was the end of December, and she called me, and she was really happy. There was just a sound in her voice. She was just kind of over the moon. She'd had a great night, and I said, you really sound good tonight. You sound like you're just really happy. She said, nothing could get me down. I just saw the greatest movie. It was really cute, and I really loved it. I went with my friend, and we went to see Aladdin. Now, I'm dating myself. This is... This is when Aladdin was first in the theater, Disney's Aladdin. Well, that struck me because, as you know, I'm an artist. At the time, I was hoping to go to Sarasota, Florida and learn to be a Disney animator. I had already seen Aladdin a couple of times, and so I decided this was my perfect end. I said, well, would you like to see it again? She said, yeah, I'd love to see it again said, I'd be glad to take you. We'd never met each other. This was before the internet. I had never even seen her picture. I didn't know what she looked like. She was 16 years old. She wasn't coming up to the radio station or anything like that. She didn't drive. I mean, I was going to have to get her parents' permission. But she said, yes, she'd love to go on a date. She asked her mom if that was okay. And her mom said, yeah, they just had to meet me first. So the date was set for the following Saturday, which would be January, I believe, the 3rd. It's either the 2nd or 3rd, but I want to say it was the 3rd. She's going to kill me when she listens to this and hears that I'm getting confused on those two dates, but she's used to it. She knows that I get January the 2nd and the 3rd mixed up all the time. But anyway, that Saturday morning... I gave her a call and said, I think we were going to meet at 1 or something like that. And I called her and said, are we still on? And she said, yeah, we're still on. So I jumped into my ugly tan AMC Spirit, 
and uh, drove to Pendleton, South Carolina to meet this girl, that Kayla girl, for the first time and on a blind date. I'd never seen her. And I was going to meet her parents at the same time. I mean, I'm walking in the door, seeing her for this for the first time and going to meet her family for the first time. I was scared out of my wits. And this was my first date. This was the first girl I eventually would ever hold hands with and kiss. She was my first for everything. I was nervous. So I put on some blue jeans and my best tennis shoes and I put on a, I want to say it was a dark blue button down shirt, a black tie with white flowers on it, and a black leather jacket. At the time, I also had long hair. It was down below my shoulders long wavy hair when I grew it out I was planning to be a in a rock band where I, I actually had recently been in a rock band and we all grew out our hair and I loved my long hair when we were talking on the phone one of the things before we decided to start dating when we were just kind of becoming friends there were some stipulations before we were to date each other first of all she and I both wanted to make sure that the other one did not smoke We were not going to date a smoker. No offense if you're a smoker. That's just uh, happened to be one of the things that was a stipulation between both of us. We weren't going to date a smoker. And secondly, uh, she wanted to make sure I did not pull for the South Carolina Gamecocks because she was a Clemson Tiger fan. And I wanted to make sure that she did not pull for the Florida Gators because I'm a Georgia Bulldog fan. As long as the criteria for those things were okay, we were good. So I drove up to her house, drove into the yard, knocked on the door. I saw the curtain for the front window barely open, and I could tell somebody was peeking through. And at first, I thought it was her, but it wasn't. It turned out to be her Aunt Dot. She had these two aunts, her mother's two sisters, uh, that had never married, and they lived with the family. And Dot was very protective of Kayla. Very, very protective of Kayla. And she had to get the first view. But it was Kayla who opened the door. And let me tell you, when that young lady opened the door, my heart went into my throat. I thought I'd died and gone to heaven. This girl was beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And, uh... I had to go in and meet the family. So they walked me through the the front door led down a hall into their living room and from their living room you went into the kitchen and there was the other sister, Christine. Kayla's mother was sitting in her customary place where I will always remember her sitting at the end of the table drinking a cup of coffee and smoking a cigarette and her dad I think was in there as well and I had to walk I felt like I was going in front of the firing squad I didn't know what I was gonna run into but they just wanted to get to know me and Kayla told me I had to pass a test by the way I knew about this test she told me about this before the date she said mom said if if I'm remembering this correctly yeah that's fine you just have to pass the coffee test If you can handle my mom's coffee, then you're worthy of her daughter, at least to get started being worthy for them to approve of of going any further and even getting to knowing me. I had to pass the coffee test, which I did, by the way. I worked at a radio station. We'd we'd drink coffee as five days old if we had to. I, I was used to strong coffee. They poured me a cup of coffee, and I drank it, and it was it was fine. They were like, yeah, we can handle this boy. Kayla and I were very nervous, as I said, and I remember their washer and dryer were also in the kitchen, and Kayla kind of hopped up and sat on the dryer while I sat at the table and took questions from Dot and Christine and Hazel, that's her mom, and her dad, Bert. And when they were satisfied that I was safe to take their daughter, we went on on our date. And the first date was 
the first thing we did was we went to see Aladdin. We went to the old... I was going to say Osteen, but it wasn't the Osteen Theater. That's no longer there either. But um, this was the Belvedere. The Belvedere Cinema in Anderson, South Carolina, which has since been torn down, breaks my heart. But it's since been torn, torn down. But there was a, a theater there that I think had two screens. And Aladdin was playing. We stood in line outside and kind of talked and got to know each other. It's funny, on the way up there, between Pendleton, South Carolina, and Anderson, where we were going to see the movie, I mean, right after we got in the car, we were talking, and I was driving, and I talked with my hands, and I was using my hands while I drove, and I would take, I'd put one hand on the wheel, but I'd be talking and gesturing with my other hand, and on our first date, I mean, not 15 minutes into our first date, Kayla says, if you're going to drive with me in the car, you'll put both hands on the wheel. I remember that like it was yesterday. It was, yes, ma'am, I will put both hands on the wheel. She's still like that. She'll she'll tell me how to drive. But I'm amazed when I told her that I was doing this road noise podcast and I was holding a microphone in one hand while I drove on busy interstates. I figured she'd tell me that was out of the question, but she doesn't. She trusts me. She knows that I drive with one hand anyway. I might as well be holding a microphone in one of them. So we saw the movie, we loved it, and then we went out to eat at Pizza Hut. Took her to have a a pizza. I remember we had a cheese pizza, and it's now, uh, I think, a Chinese or a Japanese restaurant or something like that. It's not a Pizza Hut anymore, but I told her the other day when we passed it, we needed to go in there and at least see if the same booth is there and uh, eat at that place and sit in our booth because... As the uh, months went along and we continued to date, we would go to Pizza Hut and we would always try to sit in that booth and we would order the same thing. It kind of became a tradition for us. And that's the story. We went home. We I took her home after Pizza Hut and we sat on the couch and we watched country music television, CMT. That was back when CMT actually had uh, music videos. And we watched music videos for probably about an hour talked a little bit didn't say a whole lot we were sitting there I remember before the end of the night I didn't get my first kiss on that first date I was a gentleman and I didn't want to push it but she did lean her head over and and lay her head on my shoulder on that first date and uh, we just sat there like that for a while and and again I, I was in heaven I knew from that moment this was the woman that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And she was only 16 years old. I was only 19. But I knew that, I mean, she was almost 17. But I knew then that I was serious about wanting to continue seeing her. And I hoped that it would go a long time, if not forever. And it did. She ended up being the first girl I ever held hands with. She was my first kiss. She was my first for everything. And now we've been married 21 years. And I won't say that all 21 years have just been all rainbows and fluffy clouds and angels singing. I mean, we've we've had a marriage for 21 years. Marriage is... It, it, it takes work to make sure that you're on the same page and that you're still in love. I mean, we're not going to fall out of love, but 20 years, two decades, the whole familiarity breeds contempt. We try to be sure that we don't have that happen in our marriage. And I think because we've been conscious of that, we just are are continuing our love. And I appreciate her so much. I love her so much for putting up with me because I am a lot to put up with, let me tell you. So that's the story of how I met my wife. Uh, The main part of it that everybody thinks is cool is just the fact that I was a radio DJ. She was a listener. She says she'd been listening to me for a while and had to muster up the courage to call me. That she liked the sound of my voice and and, and it's really cool. I mean, do you have a famous, not a famous, do you have a favorite DJ or somebody that you listen to and and you just like listening to them? They're they're your person that plays your songs and you hear them every afternoon or whatever every evening 
Can you imagine if you called them up one night and all of a sudden you became friends, you ended up dating, and you ended up being married for 20 years and having two kids? That's what happened. I think that's really cool. And I'm glad that I broke that cardinal rule of never dating a listener because my life would have been vastly different. I wouldn't have the love of my life that I have now, and I wouldn't have the two beautiful children that I've got right now, and uh, I'd never change a thing. So I, I love my wife so much, and I'm so proud of that story. I just love that story. One of these days, I'm hoping to write uh, a story about it and kind of fictionalize it somehow. I don't know. I've tried it a couple of times. I don't know if I'll ever get to that or not. But anyway, that's the story of how I met my wife. I hope you found that interesting. If you have an interesting story yourself, maybe how you met your Number one, how you met the love of your life. I'd love to hear it. I'd love to share it on the show. You can call me at 706-408-7456. That's 706-408-7456. And let me know. Uh, just leave your story on the hotline. Or you can email it to me at feedback at michaelblackston.com. I left a part in episode 27. Uh, this is still the same week. And I left a part of that out. And I don't know how I did, I guess because everything's been such a whirlwind of activity in the last several hours. It's just hard to keep my mind straight. And I can't believe I forgot that we have decided that we're going to take a trip to Disney World. Kayla had to schedule her week vacation at work for June the 20th through the 25th. And she was saying, don't schedule anything unless you're going to schedule yourself to work near Myrtle Beach in Conway because then you can just go work and I'll go lay out by the beach for a week. Other than that, don't be scheduling yourself anywhere. I want you to be off with me. That's fine. I'm my own boss. I run my own company. I can say when and where I work. So that was no problem. But last weekend, we were all sitting around my mom's house and a commercial for Disney World came on and they've got the new Star Wars stuff. And my wife is a Star Wars geek. She loves Star Wars. I do too, but she loves it a whole lot more than I do. And a commercial came on for the new part of Disney World that's the new MGM Star Wars stuff they've got going on. And everybody's gears started turning. My daughter is three. My son will be 12 in August. And it's kind of the perfect time. We want to go to Disney with them while he's still young enough to appreciate it. And she's still young enough for it to be just magical but old enough to know. And she's three, and we think that's perfect. Her name is also Merida. We named her after a Disney princess. And it just kind of all happened at once. Suddenly, we're all on the Internet, on our phones, looking at packages and deciding that we're going to go to Disney World. Not just me and Kayla and Noah and Merida, but my mom and my stepdad and my sister and her son. We're all going to Disney World together, June the 20th through the 25th. And that has been a huge part of my week, too. I talked about how crazy it's been. That's been one of the real reasons it has been. We've been trying to come up with uh, financials and, and the money situation, figuring out how much we're going to have to pay and how much we're going to have to save, whether we want to buy one of the packages or whether we want to rent a house that all three families can stay in at one time, which I think that's what we've decided to do. My stepdad sent me a message today about a house that we're going to look at that had a real good price for the entire week for all of us to split and it will be great um so we're going to disney world june the 20th through the 25th and i i'm promising you now i hope i don't get too caught up in everything and forget about it and i hope kayla doesn't uh, get irritated with me but especially with the rest of my family there i hope you get to hear them on the road noise podcast because just like we did when we went to Universal Studios back in October, I intend to do some audio recording while we're there and do a little bit of uh, our week at Universal Studios run, I mean, uh, at Disney World rundown coming up uh, June the 20th through the 25th. So that's been my week. And you, if you want to know the rest of what happened to me this week, listen back to episode 27 and I'll go all about that. And the positive review for this week, gee, it'd be great if I could remember what... Oh, yeah, I, I know what it was going to be. At first, I was going to review one of the groups that I'm, that I'm in on Facebook. But I decided I didn't want to do that because the group I was thinking about doing is piling up membership constantly. And although I don't have 
just out of this world numbers of people who download this podcast, this stuff does stay there. It's not like it's it's broadcast one day and then gone. It's there for however many in the future people download this podcast and I don't want to be a part of inundating them with too many members. So I'm not going to go into that specific group yet because I, I really, I don't know if the administrator would want me to. And so I'm not going to do it. But I do want to talk about Facebook groups. And I'm just going to give you a positive review about Facebook groups in general. I've mentioned them before as a good way. Well, I think I might have mentioned them in the networking thing that I trashed. So I may not have mentioned them yet, but I'm going to mention it now. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to find like-minded people that you can communicate with and build relationships with in an interest that you follow. And there are a myriad, is that right? Are a myriad, is a myriad? I don't know. There are a bunch of Facebook groups and all kinds of niches that you can go. If you're not a member of groups, maybe it's something, if you have a really, uh, if you have something that you think is interesting enough that you would like to be a part of a group associated just with that niche, go to your Facebook search, type in whatever interest it is, and then put the word group behind it. You might be surprised at how many groups pop up that you can join. Some of them are open groups where you just join automatically and be a part of it. Some of them are closed groups, and that just means that you have to ask to join. You hit the join button, and then an administrator uh, tells you it, it comes on and either approves or denies you joining. And most of the time, they won't deny you. What they want to do is they want to make sure that you're not a robot, that you're not spam or something like that. They want to be strict and make sure that you are appropriate for the group. So that's, that's a closed group. Facebook groups are a really neat way to improve your relationships and get to know more people and improve your networking and your marketing and things like that. I'm a member of several podcasting groups. I'm a member of several writing groups. I'm the men a member of a couple of uh, art groups. And I'm the administrator of a group called My Everything Arts. And I'm going to go ahead and use this opportunity to invite you, if you're an artist of any kind, I invite you to join my everything arts you don't have to be an artist you can just have an interest in the arts but the group is really aimed at being a group for artists by artists that's hard to say for artists by artists so that we can share our work uh, ask for uh, help share techniques share critiques and all that kind of stuff and artists that will help artists if you are one and you would like to be a part of it, just go to My Everything Arts in the groups. Look look at the search and go My Everything Arts group and it'll find me and ask to join. And I would love for you to send me a message if you do ask to join and tell me that you heard about it through the Road Noise podcast. And if you, uh, I'll, I'll check out your profile and if I don't recognize you, which unless you're somebody I already know, I won't recognize you, but I'll check out your profile, and I'm sure there's not going to be anything on there that'll keep you from getting in the group and, uh, and join and be a part of our little My Everything Arts family. I also have a Facebook page. I guess I'm going to wrap up this uh, episode. I've got a Facebook page called Road Noise Podcast. It's at facebook.com slash Podcast. I also have a blog page on Facebook that's, uh, I believe... It's Funny Messy Life. It funny messy. Just look up Funny Messy Life on uh, on Facebook and you'll find it. It's my blog page. FunnyMessyLife.com and MichaelBlackston.com are my websites right now. You can also go to RoadNoisePodcast.com and get this podcast direct from there. Also, any kind of show notes or anything that you might want to read relating to this show will be right there on the podcast website page. And as I mentioned earlier, the ways to get in touch with me are as follows. Via email, you want to contact me at feedback at michaelblackston.com. That's feedback at michaelblackston.com. Or you can chime in on the voicemail hotline. And that's 706-408-7456. That's 706-408-7456. And until next time, thank you for joining me for another episode of Road Noise as we learn to live life one mile at a time. <laughs>